At the heart of Tiger Prism is its security. This allows you to specify which modules a user has access to and the options within those modules. It also allows you to choose within a tree CDR access, making sure that the user only has access to specific parts of the tree. The security is flexible enough that Tiger Prism can be rolled out through your entire company. Tiger Prism also has many authentication types built in, including SAML2, Windows Authentication, and of course, Tiger Prism's local authentication. Let's go by creating a new role where you can specify which modules a user has access to and which options within that module the user can see. To do this, simply click on the roles option and create. Once you're in the create role, you will need to give the role a name. This will be the description of the role. So when you go to assign this to a person, then you will know what the role is that you are granting. To then assign access to the specific module, all you need to do is find the module you are looking for and then click on the access drop down list here and then specify the access. Read only access means the person can only see the screen. Read and write access means they can create, edit and delete on those screens. If I would like to give access to alerts, I simply click in the drop down list and click read and write access. I can then go through my list and specify which options we would like to grant them access to. For example, if I would like them to see the call volume dashboard, I can say full access. If I would then like to see them the incoming performance, I can then again grant full access. Specifying all of these options will then create the role allowing you to assign this then to an end user. Once you're happy with the role, simply click save in the top right. To edit any existing roles or to look for any other roles, simply go to roles and search and then click in the drop down list. This will then show you all the roles that are available. It will also show you how many times that role is assigned to a user. To edit a role, simply click on the role and then click the edit button in the top right hand corner here. This will then allow you to change any access that you require. Again. Once you've made your changes, click save. If you also wish to delete any roles, simply highlight the role from the drop down list and then click delete. Tree group access allows you to define which levels within the tree a user can see. To create a tree group access, click on tree groups on the left and create. You will then need to give this tree group security a name. Simply type in the name you would like to give it this will be the description that's available when you go to assign this to a user. You then need to specify which tree they have access to. If you need to grant them access to more than one tree, you'll have to do this on multiple trees. Once you've selected the tree, expand on the left hand side here down to the level you wish to grant access to. And then click on the cog on the right hand side to grant access. The first set of options here, viewable, editable and full control allows you to grant access to the directory. This means that if I give them full control or editable access, they will be able to go into the directory and make changes to those levels within the departments. This will allow them to do things like create users, assign endpoints, move and delete departments. If I then wish to give access to CDR records, you will then need to click on allow CDR access. This means that they will then be able to see all calls made by any of those departments or users within those departments. If there is a specific user within a department you do not want them to see, you can then highlight that person and disallow CDR access or make them hidden. This means when they go into that department, they will be able to see everyone else apart from that user and they will not be able to see any data for that person. Once you've made all your changes, simply click save in the top right hand corner. Tree group access allows you to define which levels within the tree a user can see. To create a tree group access, click on tree groups on the left and create. You will then need to give this tree group security a name. Simply type in the name you would like to give it this will be the description that's available when you go to assign this to a user. You then need to specify which tree they have access to. If you need to grant them access to more than one tree, you'll have to do this on multiple trees. 
Once you've selected the tree, expand on the left hand side here down to the level you wish to grant access to and then click on the cog on the right hand side to grant access. The first set of options here, viewable, editable and full control, allows you to grant access to the directory. This means that if I give them full control or editable access, they will be able to go into the directory and make changes to those levels within the departments. This will allow them to do things like create users, assign endpoints, move and delete departments. If I then wish to give access to CDR records, you will then need to click on allow CDR access. This means that they will then be able to see all calls made by any of those departments or users within those departments. If there is a specific user within a department you do not want them to see, you can then highlight that person and disallow CDR access or make them hidden. This means when they go into that department, they will be able to see everyone else apart from that user and they will not be able to see any data for that person. Once you've made all your changes, simply click save in the top right hand corner. To then edit any existing tree group securities, click on the search option on the left, choose the tree group you wish to edit, and then click the edit button in the top right or the delete button to delete that tree group. The next part of security is report groups. If you've granted access to reports, it allows you to choose which reports that users can generate. To do this, give this group a name and then choose from the drop down list on the right hand side whether that report is accessible to them or not. Once you've granted access to the reports that the report group can see, simply click the save button in the top right hand corner. Again, as in all the other screens, if you then wish to edit that, simply select the report group you wish to edit and click the edit button. Or again, you can delete. The next section of security is export groups. If you have given the users access to the export tile in here, you can create a group that allows you to specify which exports the users can run. To do this, give the export group a name and then choose from the drop down list which exports the user can generate. Once you've selected all of the exports they can generate, click on the save button. Again, to edit any of these groups, simply choose the group you wish to edit and click edit or delete. And finally is widget groups. Widget groups allow you to specify which widgets a person can run. As an administrator, you can build multiple widgets and then assign these widgets to a person. This means they do not need to know any prior knowledge of analytics. You can pre-build these widgets for them and they can simply then generate the data. To specify which widgets are available in that widget group, give the group a name and then simply come and select which widgets that group has access to, meaning that person can then generate those widgets you've built for them. Once you've added all the widgets they can see, simply click save. Again, as in any other screen, you can edit these groups at any time or delete them if you require. Now we've created all of our roles, tree group securities, report group securities, export group securities, and widget group securities, we now need to assign these to people. To then create access to Tiger Prism, click under people and search and then filter on any one of these columns at the top here to find the person you wish to give access to. In my example, I will search for party name, Austin. This will then return me Shannon Austin as a person. To then grant access into Tiger Prism, I then click on the three lines on the left hand side. I then go to the account tab and it will say this person has no account. Click here to create it. So I simply click on the plus here. I then choose my sign in type. If I'm creating a local Tiger Prism account, I will select local. If I'm choosing a Windows account, I will select Windows. 
and I will make sure that I put in the domain and the username. If I'm using SAML2, I must make sure that the username matches what is coming back from my identity provider. In this example, we will create a local account. We will create a local username. And we will create a password. Please note, passwords are password complex sensitive. So it must not contain the account name or it must have at least one uppercase letter, one number or special character. Once you've created the password, you can then define whether they have API access, if this has been licensed on your system or not. You can then choose which role you wish to give them access to. So in our example, we created the manager test role. We then choose which tree group they have access to. In our example, we created the gold medal tree access. We can then specify which report group or because we didn't give them access to reports, we could say no access. Again, with export group, if you give them access to the export tile, you will need to specify which group they have access to or specify no access. With the widget groups, again, we didn't give access to analytics. Therefore, there is no requirement to give them access to widget groups. You can then choose which default language will be applied when they log in and then which time zone that person is in. Once you've done that, click save. To find out more information about what a user is doing, you can also come into a person and look at their activity and see what they've been doing. You can come into the account. You can change their password by clicking on overwrite password. You can also lock and unlock their account by clicking on the padlock in the top right hand corner here. It will also tell you how many times a user has signed into the application. To see which users are mainly using Tiger Prism, you can also click on the search option here and enable the column on the right hand side here of total sign in. You can then come over to the right hand side and then see how many times a user has signed into the application. To edit a user's account, simply then click on the three lines again, go back to account, click edit, and in here you can change their role, their tree group, their report group, their export group, or their widget group. Then simply click save and their account will then be upgraded to whichever access you have given them. Thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and if there is anything else you would like to learn about Tiger Prism and its other modules, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.